Okay. Uh, so my name is Stefan. I'm uh, working for uh, uh, currently for Intel as a contractor in France, and we are working on the Tyson project. And uh, I'm the release engineer for Tyson Common. Okay. Um, my talk today is about creating an IoT device, and um, just for the fun, I chose to to try to <laughs> to use Tyson to make it. And um, I saw that it was quite easy to to achieve some things, some funny things. Um, uh, I will try to show you some receipts and some um, uh, uh, how we can do some IoT stuff with, with Tizen. So the agenda is uh, uh, a, a demo, roughly on, on 10 minutes. Then I'll try to show you what, uh, what I did with, with Tizen to what I changed uh, to achieve the demo. And then we, we get, we'll get the question and answers. So <laughs> what happens? Uh, I have two minor boards here, okay, two minor boards max, this one and this other one. Um, this one is plugged on a gyroscope, accelerometer and magnetometer here in my little car, okay. So we, we suppose that the car is transporting a crocodile from one zoo to another, so it's very dangerous, we shouldn't, uh, the crocodile shouldn't escape and uh, the car shouldn't crash, okay. So we'll try to monitor what happens on this car. So regularly, uh, we, we'll get some information from the uh, accelerometer and get um, the behavior of the car. Uh, then we'll push the data regularly, but only when we get some events. So this first board is quite intelligent in the fact that we sample things very quickly, something like 100 hertz or something like that. But we keep and we make some calculations and we keep only uh, the events that uh, make sense. And then we forward the, the events to another one, another board, I mean, uh, through a Bluetooth connection. This other board will display the behavior of the car. And, uh, and we'll also, I, I just simulated some kind of cloud somewhere, which is in fact on my, on my laptop. So I, I try to switch. If I can, um, wow, fantastic. So as you see, I have a little Node.js server on my laptop and I'm refreshing this page regularly. I could, could have done WebSocket, but I was in a hurry, so <laughs> I was lazy. I, I'm just refreshing every two seconds. And then when I change the orientation of the car, I should see that we get some warnings or some alerts. And if I let the car like this, I get the crashes. Okay, so I, to display on the, on the screen, I don't know if everyone see the screen here. So you have the screen connected to the second board where the, the car will also be, the behavior of the car will be shown. It works or not? Yeah, it works. So depending on the angle, on the X or Y angle, <laughs> it will show the, the some kind of warnings, okay? So you can imagine anything, in fact, it's just for the demo. Um, so back on the... Back to okay. Um, so how, how did I make that? Uh, I just took a Tyson Common release, the latest one, I mean, the one I released this week. Um, I modified some things to, um, for the Bluetooth and because we don't have any display, I mean, a GDMI display or VGA display. We don't need any Western or XORG server. So I removed <laughs> the displays, the display servers. Um, also, we don't need any UI API or graphic API of some kind, so I just remove them also, uh, at least for the uh, for the board the board that makes the acquisition. Uh, for the other one, I kept uh, some graphic toolkit because I just wanted to <laughs> to display something on the frame buffer, but that's all. Um, so uh, for the communication, uh, I mean for the Bluetooth communication, I didn't have time to integrate the latest libraries that are coming 
I mean, IoT BT is, uh, was announced uh, a, few, a few weeks ago. I mean, the first release was uh, released last week or something like that, or two weeks ago. Um, I didn't have time to integrate that, but uh, the idea would be that uh, uh, the, the two bolts should recognize themselves seamlessly, and the other one should be able to send the data to the internet securely, and etc. But I didn't use the, this abstraction layer to make things work on this demo. Um, I just use an um, ERIFCOM uh, communication bit for the Bluetooth. It's quite simple. It works. Um, I could have used some authentic authentication or security above uh, this layer, but it's just a demo. So. Um, so why, why choosing Tizen for an IoT device? Um, and what IoT device could we use? Um, I think that, from my experience, um, we can't use Tizen on anything. I mean, we just need some memory and CPU power. Um, for me, the minimum is uh, 128 byte, uh, megabytes. And honestly, 512 megabytes is comfortable, um, and more often. Um, for the CPU, a single core running at a small speed, like 500 megahertz, is, is enough. Uh, could be less. Uh, I didn't make any test on that, but uh, I'm quite sure that it works at uh, 500 megahertz. Uh, for the display, uh, we can run with any, uh, without any GPU, of course. For example, here, I, I have a GPU, in, in fact, on my metal board, but I don't use it. Um, I just use a frame buffer because it's a USB device. The, the little display is a USB device. Okay. Um, one point is that connectivity is required because <laughs> we are in IoT rooms. <laughs> it doesn't make sense to, to be connected. <laughs> uh, so we can have Ethernet or Wi-Fi or Bluetooth and any upcoming way of connecting things. Um, from what I tested with a uh, what matter, the power consumption I observed on uh, that board, for example, the minor board max with it's a dual core CPU uh, uh, with a one gigabyte of RAM, I think, if I remember correctly. Um, it's around 10 watts. Okay, um, I also tested the uh, uh, Tizen on on the Intel Edison board, the small board. We are roughly around one watt, or depends if you are if you enable the radio, if you do Bluetooth, low energy or not, etc. Uh, but that gives the, the range. Um, so the typical hardware on which we can make Tizen run, uh, I mean where we support uh, uh, Tizen officially, uh, some minor board Max, uh, some Intel Nux, uh, based on quite the same CPU as a minor board. Uh, the Intel Edison that was launched in uh, uh, October uh, 14, uh, some ARM boards also, like the Android and other uh, generic boards. Um, so as you see, we, can, we are quite uh, large for the hardware we can support. So anyone could find uh, the board that fits the most uh, uh, the project. I mean, if you want something very integrated, you can, you can take uh, or you, you have a lot of things to plug, uh, you could use a minor board. If you want just a small computer, you can take a NUC, etc. If you have a small project you want to develop and sell, probably the Edison is the best way to, to achieve things. So everyone is able to choose the best board. <laughs> Why choosing Tizen? Uh, Tizen is claimed for the US for everything. Um, it was the first uh, baseline of the, this OS, but um, honestly, I think it's, it's not very true that you can install Tizen on, on Multiple uh, multiple platforms and um, a wide range of hardware. So you can, with the architecture, you can dedicate, you can cut the APIs, you can um, adjust things the way you want. Um, for example, Tizen Common is just a base for constructing a profile or building another profile uh, dedicated to a, a given task. For example, for the, for a TV, for a smartphone, for anything. And IoT devices are just a range of new profiles for Tizen. So it's, it's the same philosophy that uh, the, the previous one that was uh, developed in the, in the past years. Um, so we have a lot of uh, 
lot of components inside Tizen. I mean, we offer a lot of components. Everyone can use them or not. Uh, it's clean, quite comprehensive. Um, and one point which is important for me is that Tizen is a new Linux distro. It's not just based on Linux, as you may know some uh, <laughs> operating systems that are based on Tizen. Tizen is a real GNU Linux distro. Yeah, it's very important because you can take some piece of software coming from anywhere and you just recompile and run that. You don't have to um, use a new SDK, use new things, etc. No, if you want to run a native application on Tizen, it's very easy. It's like running on Red Hat or, or OpenSUSE or anything. So it's an it's a, it's a important point for um, integrating new software coming from outside. Uh, if you want to, to make it run on Tizen, it's possible. Um, so main, the main features are that Tizen is a connected uh, distribution. I already said that we need the, some internet or Wi-Fi, wi etc. Um, it's secure. It's a, I think, very interesting point for IoT things. Uh, so the platform is secured with Mac. And of course, um, when we, <coughs> we will extend things with uh, other devices or on the internet, uh, we will probably use uh, frameworks that propose security, like IoTVT, but any other framework with security would fit. <coughs> um, so it's suitable for embedded platforms. Um, recently, we released the uh, Yocto uh, version of Tizen. So you can build, right now, the build is, is made with two systems. One with the OBS, which is the historical system, the legacy system for building Tizen. And a new one, which is uh, the same, but based on Yocto receipts and BitBake. Um, so everyone will have the, the choice uh, either to choose the OBS version. It's more like an OpenSUSE distro or something like that. Or simply a, a more embedded distribution like Yocto. And lastly, <coughs> Tizen will be more IoT aware. Um, I mean that we are currently integrating uh, the IoT development kits. Um, I will give some details after. And um, also IoTVT um, layers. So uh, I made some adjustment, uh, as I said. Uh, for the kernel, for example, uh, for the minor board, I didn't have to change anything on the kernel because it was a supported platform. But for example, if you want to run Tizen on Edison, you would have probably to uh, patch uh, the Tizen kernel with Edison-specific patches. Um, so anyway, it's a usual hardware ad abstraction layer. You have to adjust depending on your hardware. Um, also, the, the, the minor board in my, in my demo are at less. So I just removed the graphic and UI components, like the toolkits and the uh, display servers, etc. Um, I also removed the web apps <laughs> functionality, which is the <laughs> best functionality of Tizen for many people. But in our case, uh, I don't, I didn't want to make some web apps run on the minor board, so it didn't make sense. Um, I just coded the most of middleware with Node.js. It's easy and it's uh, uh, yeah, it's easy to set up and it works very well. Um, some new Tizen API were introduced. Recently, I mean in the last year. And the, the way I think it would be very useful for the IoT world. Uh, the wearable API was introduced with a specific uh, uh, calls for wearable things. I mean, on, on, on something you wear on you, uh, for, example, uh, for example, a watch or a um, um, uh, belt. A belt, yeah. <laughs> a belt, uh, I saw that. Yeah, you have intelligent belts, so uh, it's that's uh, some kind of wearable uh, API. Is hmm? uh, there was al also some device management APIs that were introduced, uh, some sensors APIs, and the IoT specific APIs are, are currently introduced. Uh, That's the usual architecture of Tizen. Uh, so I just mark what I removed. Uh, as you see, we can keep some interesting things. For example, in, an, in the 
native APIs here, we can keep the social and content API. So we are able to develop some native Tizen applications and make them run on the IoT devices. And uh, we are able to use all those APIs uh, instead of trying to reinvent the wheel, and <laughs> et cetera. Um, of course, depending on, the, on your project, you will probably remove the APIs you don't want. But oh, we can let them where they are. It, it doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Um, and it's the same on the, on the core application layer. We will remove the non-supported things, depending on the hardware or on the project. And probably the kernel and the security stuff will stay the same. The way to customize is, I would say, as usual. <laughs> uh, we have the Tyson.org reference APIs and all the architecture I showed just before. And you can just make a copy, a kind of copy, or uh, you, you could have the same layers on your site. And depending on the build system, uh, you'll have to glue uh, the way <coughs> that both layers can merge, and you'll get some specific private version of your Tizen. Uh, the idea is simply to integrate your specific hardware, for example, your kernel, your bootloader, depending on your platform, etc. If you have a specific API for something, just put it here, or perhaps I here. I don't know. Uh, Stefan, you have five minutes, and we can go to questions now. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just talked about IoT. Uh, there is a presentation by Brendan Nuffall. Uh, it's at 12, I think. And uh, it's about the IoT dev kit. Very interesting. I used, I could have used it for, <laughs> I didn't. There is a LED blinking each time uh, some data is sent between the boards. And you don't see it, but it's blinking. And I could have used those two libraries to just make the, the link blink, the LED blink. And also, I, I could have used uh, the UPM library to uh, get the data from the accelerometer. But it was too late for me. Um, and IoT, uh, th there will be uh, today another presentation ab about that, I think, uh, Philippe. On the last hour, there is an open uh, hour for showing demos, and I can show you how to use IoT on Tizen. So that's the question. Okay. So if, if you have question? Can you repeat the question? Yeah. yeah. Any questions? Which ARM platform do you run on? Uh, we have the Edgeway officially. Yeah, yeah, the question was, uh, what are the ARM platforms supported on Titan? Uh, we have the Odroid U3, which is supported. Uh, I think that Samsung will also support some Arch, uh, Arch 64, I mean, ARM 64 bits architecture. Uh, I don't know the boards, but uh, they have some. Uh, this architecture is also supported. It was the, it's a Gear 2 from Samsung. And um, we have some, Versatile Express profile, which is supported from the from the kernel. Which, uh, for example, we tested the, the Tizen on, on Linux boards based on N, uh, all winner A20 CPUs, for example. And um, I'm sure that it would it could work on, on the other boards. Uh, I would say that the main problem on ARM boards currently is the GPU driver. But if you make some IoT stuff where you don't need GPU drivers, you're okay. So Raspberry Pi is a good. A good target for that for Python. Another question? So uh, yeah. you removed some parts of Python into uh, the application. Is there a configuration tool to remove this, or do you do manually? No, I just uh, at the moment wha when I created the ah, I should repeat this question. Sorry, uh, the question was um, uh, how did I remove the the some components on the on Tizen to make the demo. Uh, it was very easy because when you when you first build all the packages uh, in Tizen, you have, we have something like 800 source packages with least to 2,000 binary packages, and then we assemble assemble those packages in binary images, and we we say we want that 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 and that. So when you when you assemble, you can say no, I don't take that, and uh, using the usual dependencies. Uh, uh, workflow, uh, you'll get just a small image, an um, IoT image, I could say, 
uh, of Dyson. Okay, any other question? Okay, well thank you very much Stefan. You're welcome.